All right, I am filming outside. I'm gonna take my list. I made a list. I'm literally sitting in horse shit right now, so um, I will definitely clean this notebook <laughs> after I am finished filming this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, which has been dead since August, September, something like that. Today, I will uh, talk about some stuff that I think is useful to know before you want to hike the GR20. I hiked the GR20 this year in August and I'm going to share my tips with you about this hike. Mainly I will be talking about how the GR20 differs from other trails and I will also share some little tips to make your hike that pizzy bit more enjoyable. So the first thing that I want to share with you today is an app and I have my phone right here and the app is called GR20 and this app has the maps loaded into it. It keeps updating on the weather so if you uh, connect with internet it'll immediately search for uh, the weather conditions for the coming days and it also um, shares the altitude with you which is really nice because on a GR20 you're basically every day going up a mountain or several mountains and on this app you can really see how far away you are from the summit of the mountain which I really liked. The app costs about I think 8 euros. It has some flaws which is that the app only has the altitude for the, um, the hike that this person did. Like the person that hiked uh, the trail that's in the app uh, sometimes takes a variant or sometimes takes the old GR20 which is a bit different from the new one and for those stretches of the trail you don't have uh, the altitude but overall good app you have the weather conditions you have the altitude most of the time I recommend it the second thing I wanted to touch on is how you get to the trail. As most of you probably know, Corsica is an island, so you can only reach it by plane or by boat. By plane, I think you have four options. I think it has four airports. Um, there's Ajaccio, Bastia, Calvi, and a fourth one that I don't remember. But you can take a boat. <laughs> you can take a boat from... Italy. I didn't take a boat from Italy so I cannot really inform you on that. In France there's three harbors where you can take a boat to Corsica. I think it's Nice, Marseille and Toulon. And you can take a boat to six places in Corsica. I took one to Porto Vecchio because that's the closest to Conca. But you can also take a boat to Bastia, Calvi, Lille Rousse and two other places. You can book the boat online beforehand and when you book a boat you have three options. You can reserve a cabin, you can reserve a seat or you can just reserve like the permission to be on the boat. Then you don't have a cabin, you don't have a seat but you can just be on the boat. I figured out while I was already on the boat that I, <laughs> that I had the third option. I thought I was gonna have a seat, but that wasn't the case. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but actually it didn't really matter because there was a restaurant which had carpet flooring and I had my sleeping mattress, I had a sleeping bag, so I just rolled out my mattress in the restaurant and I could sleep a decent amount of time. There's other people doing this as well, so I think it's not really weird to do it. And it's cheaper. So meh. when you are on Corsica and you want to get to the trail, you can take a bus, uh, you can reserve a navette, or you can also take a taxi, I think. I was, first I was hitchhiking and then a guy came up to me and he told me that he reserved a navette and that there was a free place in a navette. So he asked me if I wanted to join and of course I wanted to join. It was going directly to the, to the start of the GR20. I would recommend a navette. If you can share it with a lot of people, it gets cheaper and it is just going directly to the start of the GR20. I like that. So the third thing I wanted to talk about is language. So on mostly all the trails I did so far, everybody speaks English and everybody, well, 
it's not everybody's first language, but everybody is able to speak English. However, on the GR20, this is not the case. The people on Corsica speak a mixture, they have their own language, they speak a mixture of French and Italian, but most of the people there, I think everybody understands French and speaks French to you. So if you're not so good at French, I would recommend to just just learn a couple of phrases that can come in handy, a couple of words, and then probably you'll be fine. The fourth thing I wanted to talk about is how the trail is indicated. Like all the GR trails in Europe, it is indicated with a stripe of red paint and a stripe of white paint. This is the main route, so if you follow these signs you have the main route. If you want to take a variant, uh, which I sometimes did, you gotta follow the yellow marks. If you haven't seen a mark in like five to ten minutes, I recommend you check your GPS or your map because mostly that means that you got lost. There's really, really many indications. So if you find yourself not seeing one for some time, the possibility is real that you got lost. And then the fifth thing I'm talking about today is food. So the um, GR20 passes by some huts. These huts mostly have a little shop where you can buy some food, but these options are quite limited. I mean, you can buy all your food on trail, that's no problem. It's just not really a lot. What I did was I took uh, tortillas with me, so when I found some Nutella or some cheese or anything, I could put that on my tortilla, so I had something to put it on. And I also took couscous and herbs, so if I wanted an evening meal, I had one. Also, if you don't want to cook a meal yourself, there's always the option to um, eat dinner at the refuge. I think like every dinner is mostly around seven o'clock at night and I think it's like between 20 and 30 euros and for that price you mostly get a plate with some uh, different kind of meats like just a little starter with appetizer things then you get your main course which is mostly pasta and then after the main course you mostly get a piece of cheese uh, with some bread or uh, an orange a piece of fruit something like that sometimes it's nice to have a meal when you really don't want to cook and it's also nice to have the meal because then you really get the opportunity to meet new people on trail because you're all sitting around big tables. So you start talking to people immediately and people start talking to you immediately. And that's really nice. Oh yeah, a shop on trail that is pretty nice and that you can really use as a resupply is the shop in Vizavona. It's the middle point of the trail. There you can, you can really buy some different things. So I would make your big resupply in Vizavona and then in the little shops buy little bits and pieces to eat. The sixth thing I wanted to talk about is the weather. On the GR20 you're mostly in mountain area, uh, which means that uh, weather can change really quickly. It can be sunny one moment and then half an hour later that there can be a really big storm. So I would really recommend to check the weather before you start hiking and if people tell you that it's not safe please don't go don't go if it's not safe also if they say that there's not gonna be a storm but it's gonna rain in some areas this can also be really dangerous because some areas are just like big stones that you have to step on and if they are slippery an accident can happen really quickly. So really just check the weather and you'll be fine. Also the weather is really warm so be sure to always have enough water. I took about, I took three liters, I took two bottles of one liter and a half so that makes three liters and for me that was enough but I saw some people carrying more and actually needing more. So really take a minimum of three liters with you. I'd recommend that. Okay, the seventh thing I'm talking about is wild camping. Uh, on the GR20 it's not allowed to wild camp, you're not allowed. The GR20 is splitted into different etapes 
uh, etapes, uh, different pieces of the trail. And you really should stick to those. So, or you hike one, which is mostly a six hour hike, or you hike two, which is then mostly an 11 hour hike. At the end of each etape is a hut and there you can uh, pay like seven euros to have the permission to put your tent up at the refuge. When you download the app of the GR20 you will see that it sometimes has an indication of a um, camping spot. I paid attention to these and mostly it's true, mostly when there is the, the indication of a camping spot there is a camping spot, but you should know that it's not allowed. Also, there are not a lot of options for wild camping on this trail. It's really rocky, it's really like not flat. So I would really recommend to put your tent up next to a hut. The not yeah, the eighth tip is uh, for me, it's my biggest tip for you. This tip is about getting up early and start hiking early. I mostly put my alarm at 5 a.m. I know, for me it's, this is crazy. It's still dark at 5 a.m. Um, but I always wanted to start hiking at 6 because at 6 the sun is getting up and you can start hiking. I really like to um, get up really early because then there's not a lot of people on trails. So you're mostly when you start hiking early, you are alone. So there's not many people. Also, you get the beautiful sunrise i think like the sunrises and the sunsets were my favorite moments of the day mostly but i'm a sucker for soft colors maybe that's why so not many people beautiful sunrises and of course the temperature is cooler in the morning when it's like 1 pm they rise to 30 degrees 35 degrees sometimes it's really hot so in the mornings it's a bit cooler and it's really nice to start your day off with these temperatures, <laughs> really. So, not many people, beautiful sunrises, cool temperatures, and also um, safety. If there would be a storm, it's mostly in the afternoon. If you start early, you can finish an up at like 11 a.m., 12 a.m. p.m. What is it then? 12 a.m. I think. And that's mostly, 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 check the weather, eh? but mostly a storm arrives later in the day. Then we're already at the ninth tip. Well, this is not really a tip. Uh, this is really short. Um, you have snakes on trail. These are not rattlesnakes or something like that, but these are snakes. And I saw, I think, two, two or three? Two, I think. It's just something to keep in mind that there could be snakes sometimes. If you see a snake and it doesn't move, make a lot of noise to get it going. Don't step on it, don't touch it, don't do that. But just make a lot of noise so the snake goes away and then you can just hike on. And the tenth and final thing I'm gonna talk about is just three little things that I think are really helpful on trail. The first of these three things is earplugs. <laughs> I talked about not being allowed to wild camp and having to camp near a hut. So of course many people do this and with many people comes much noises. <laughs> Hey, I'm a really difficult sleeper and I had a lot of trouble with uh, sleeping well near these huts because people just, I don't know why, but some people are just not so quiet at night. But I took some earplugs and I was really happy with them. Take some earplugs and you will be able to sleep. The second thing you should take with you is enough toilet paper. This is really the first trail where I ran out of toilet paper, so just take enough. Um, some shops don't have it, the toilets don't have it, just take enough. And then the third thing that you really need to pack is sunscreen. Please take enough and use enough. I forgot to put on sunscreen one afternoon and I got sunburned pretty bad. So please, 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 please use enough sunscreen. And that concludes 
what I wanted to say today. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I will try to answer them. Also, I'm planning on making some more videos on this channel. If you have some subjects in mind, uh, from which you say, ah, I want her to talk about that or that, or mm, I was always wondering this about hiking. Let me know. I will maybe make a video about it if I have time. So this concludes my video about my tips of the GR20. If you're gonna do this hike, have fun. Don't be scared. It's not really that dangerous. If you are responsible and if you think before you act and yeah, have fun, have fun, have fun. Bye-bye.